Hello everyone. Today we will be studying the procedure to define the occupation numbers for atoms in the full proof software that is used for structural refinement. So in full proof you have to uh, manually input the value of the occupancy of each atom so that you can get back the chemical structure satisfactorily. So before you start refining the structure you should know the crystallographic information of your sample that is you should know its Wyckoff position, its XYZ coordinates, its occupancy number for each atom as well as the lattice parameters so that you can start refining those values and then reach at a satisfactory fit. So here to give an example of how you define the occupancy number in full prof software, I have taken the example of a compound CAMN7O12. So I have uh, taken the details of this compound from crystallographic open database where the Wyckoff positions and the occupancies were already given. But I would like to now tell you how those occupancies are defined in full proof. Now in this compound uh, which is given by the formula CA MN7O12 correct you have one kind of calcium atom then you have two types of MN atoms why two types because the crystallographic environment around each of these MN atoms is different hence they are written as MN1 and MN2 and there is also a third type of MN ion given by MN3 which is sitting at another Wyckoff position. So MN1 is sitting at the 9E Wyckoff site, MN2 is sitting at the 9D Wyckoff site and MN3 is sitting at the 3B Wyckoff site. So you can see all three of them have a crystallographically different environment and hence they have been labeled as 1, 2 and 3. Also there are two kinds of oxygen atoms in this compound denoted by O1 and O2, each of them sitting at the same Wyckoff site of 18F. Now this compound stabilizes in the space group which has a maximum multiplicity of 18, which is also given by the highest Wyckoff number coefficient that you can find here. So 18 is the maximum multiplicity of the space group in which this compound is stabilizing. So to define the occupancy of each atom or ion, you have to divide its site multiplicity by the maximum multiplicity of the space group. Hence for the calcium atom, the occupancy number that you will write in full prof is given by 3 divided by 18 where 3 is the site multiplicity and 18 is the maximum multiplicity of the space group. So that gives you a number 1 by 6 which is nothing but 0 0.16667. Similarly for MN1 it will be 9 divided by 18 which gives you 0 0.5. For MN2 it is 9 divided by 18 again which gives you 0 0.5. For MN3, it's 3 divided by 18, which gives you 1 by 6. For oxygen 1, it's 18 by 18, which gives you 1. Then for oxygen 2, you get 18 by 18, which is 1. So now these are the numbers that you will input in the full prof file to define the occupancy of each element. So basically, now if you try to generalize, the occupancy number in full prof is given by site multiplicity by maximum multiplicity of the space group. Now that you have defined your structure, you would like to get back the chemical formula. That is also very straightforward. As you can see, the calcium occupancy was 1 by 6. And if you want to now get the chemical occupancy for Mn, first you have to add all the contributions from all the Mn atoms. So total Mn contribution is Mn1 plus Mn2 plus Mn3 which is half plus half plus 1 by 6 that gives a number 7 by 6. And the total oxygen content is oxygen 1 plus oxygen 2 which is 1 plus 1 that gives you a value of 2. So now let's 
regenerate the chemical formula. So here the numbers are in the form of fractions. To make them whole numbers, you have to multiply a factor of 6 to all three of them. So for the chemical occupancy of calcium, you have to multiply 1 by 6 into 6, that gives you 1. For Mn, you have to multiply 7 by 6 into 6, that gives you 7. For oxygen, you have to multiply 2 into 6, that gives you 12. Now you can rewrite the formula as calcium 1, Mn 7, oxygen 12, which is nothing but the chemical formula with which we started. Hence, if you know the occupancy numbers in full proof, you can always get back the chemical formula. Thank you.